All right, guys, welcome to Operations with Radical Exponents. The essential knowledge for today is if the root, uh, the root A uh, and root B are real numbers, if they have the same index, you can combine them under the same root and simplify. So that's one of the biggest things we're going to talk about today. Uh, the other thing, a radical expression can be simplified when the exponent of one factor of the radicand is a multiple of the radical's index. For example, maybe you have the fourth root of uh, x to the twelfth, okay? So 12 has factors of 4, and we'll be able to simplify those, okay? So you'll see those two big ideas throughout, this, uh, throughout the examples. Lastly, the product of radicals that have the same index can be simplified, and that's important. And you've seen a lot of these rules as we've gone through, so let's look at a couple of examples. So as I said, there's nothing really new here, um, but we're just kind of actually putting these rules down on, on, on paper. So let's simplify these two expressions. So we have root 32x to the eighth. Now there's no index here, so it's the square root. So what the, the two essential knowledge pieces is really talking about is being able to break this up. So we have root 32x to the eighth. So if I can write anything that has a second power to match my index, that's what I want to do. So 42, or excuse me, 32 is 4 squared times 2. So I rewrote 32 here. X to the 8th is X to the 4th squared. And notice how I didn't put the 4 on the outside, I put the 2. So when these indexes match the powers, they can come out. So this next step, I just broke it apart again, and this is that first part of the essential knowledge. I took root 4 squared times uh, root X to the 4th squared times root 2. If you have an index that matches a power, that base is going to come out, this base comes out, and square root of 2 stays underneath the radicand because that's an index of 2, the power is only 1, it can't come out. So root 32x to the 8th is 4x to the 4th times root 2 in simplified form. Next, we have the 4th root of 16a to the 24th, b to the 13th power. So again, can I write any of these numbers that has a power of 4 to match my index? So uh, the fourth root here, and I forgot that, I want to make sure I keep the 4 there, 4, 4, and that can be tricky, so make sure you keep those, all those 4s, uh, and I forgot that, so that's, that's my bad there. So the fourth root of 2 to the 4th, uh, 24 is 6 times 4, so it's 8 to the 6 times 4, b to the 13th, 13th is prime, 13th is prime, but b cubed to the 4th is 12 times b, that gives me 13. So there's b to the 13th written in a, a unique way. I can break these apart since this is multiplication. So 2 to the 4th, the root, uh, root, fourth root of 2 to the 4th, the fourth root of a to the 6th to the 4th, fourth root of b cubed to the 4th, and anything that, any power that matches the index is going to come out front. Um, so you get 2a to the 6 times the absolute value of b cubed and times the fourth root of b. Why is that the absolute value? Because if you think about it, you have an even number here on the index, even power, but what comes out is odd. So to ensure that's an even power or, or even number output, we have to put absolute values by the b cubed. And that came from a previous lesson. Even power, even index, odd output for the power put absolute value around it, that ensures you have a positive number. Okay, so that's the answer to the second part. So again, these are the first two, this is both parts of Ascension Knowledge, breaking up my radical, trying to make any number underneath to match a power of the index, whatever the index is, that's what I'm trying to do. Okay, and when you have numbers that match the index, when powers match the index, those bases are coming out. Okay. Uh, this is a rule that we know, quotient property of radicals for any real number, a and b, where b is not zero, and any integer greater than one, meaning the index is greater than one, you can split up a fraction that the whole thing is being raised to an n power, or uh, n radical here, the nth root. We can take the nth root of a over the nth root of b. So what that says is you can split up the radical, the nth root, to the top and bottom and then try simplifying. We have to add this note, if you have a radical in the denominator, we've got to go back to rationalizing the denominator. And here are two key points. If you have a root in the denominator, just root b, okay, and that's where it's a square root, you just multiply by that root. For example, if you have 2 over root 3, to get rid of the radical in the denominator, it's root 3 over root 3 to this fraction. 
and you get 2 root 3 over 3. This is where it gets a little more complicated. You have uh, the nth root of b to the x. So that means you have to multiply the top and bottom fraction by the nth root of b to the n minus x. So if we have 5 over the cube root of 2, 2 is to the first power, 3 minus 1 is 2. So you're going to multiply everything by the cube root of 2 squared. The cube root of 2 squared because it's the index minus the power. 3 minus 1 gives me 2, so it's 2 squared. And then you're left with 5 cube root of 4 over 2. Because if you multiply here, look, 2 cubed, the cube root of 2 cubed is just 2. Okay? So those are a couple properties on rationalizing the denominator and the quotient property. So we're actually going to apply the quotient property and that rationalization here. Um, so you have the square root of x to the 6, that quantity over the quantity x to the 6, y to the 7th. You're taking the square root of that whole thing. By the quotient property, split the root into the top and bottom. Now I go back and say, can I write what's underneath to match that index? Well, 6 is a factor of 2, right? The factors of 6 are 2 times 3, 6 and 1. So we can get that to work. We get x cubed times 2. x to the third raised to the second power. y to the seventh can also be written with powers of 2. It's y cubed raised to the second power times y. Now, even power, even index, odd output, you get absolute value on your exponent there, your base with the uh, x cubed. You've got to put a, a rational, or excuse me, absolute value by that. Here, you have y cubed. You have the same result here. Should you put absolute value here? In this case, no, because when you rationalize the denominator, you get that even, even power here. So we get the simplified form is the absolute value of x cubed over y cubed times root y. Get rid of the, the root by multiplying the top and bottom by root y here, and you get the absolute value of x cubed times root y over y to the fourth. Uh, fourth root of 6 over 5x, again, quotient rule in red here. Now, um, now this is where we've got to use that second rule. So you get the fourth root of 6 over the fourth root of 5x. Now, we're going to multiply the top and bottom. This is not a square, so we have to use that second rule. We have to take the index minus these powers. So that's where the cube comes from. 4 minus 1 is 3. 4 minus 1 is 3. So you're going to multiply the top and the bottom to rationalize this uh, fraction by 5 cubed x cubed. And if you think about it, um, when you multiply across, which is what I've done in this next step, 5 to the first times 5 to the third is 5 to the fourth. And you've got a fourth index, so guess what comes out? 5x to the fourth. Okay, so that's how we can rationalize the denominator and simplify these functions. Okay, not functions, excuse me, expressions. Uh, a couple things about simplifying radical expressions. Make sure the index is as small as possible. How do you know when you're simplified? Well, when the power in the radicand is smaller than the index, then you know you've, you've, you've simplified, okay, as far as you can go. The radicand contains no factors other than one of the index. Um, that's another way to simplify. So if it's a cube root and you have x squared underneath as the radicand, you can't simplify that anymore because 2 is not a factor of 3. Um, radicand contains no fractions and there's no radicals in the denominator and this last part is rationalizing the denominator as we do, did in the previous board. Alright, so big example here you have the 5 times the cube root of negative 12 a b to the 4 times 3 times the cube root of a squared b squared. The indexes match so I can combine them underneath. I multiply the numbers on the outside so the 15 stays for a long time there and then I just go in here and simplify. So I break down the negative 12, the, neg uh, the 18, um, and then I combine. So I get negative 2 squared times 3, that's 12. Um, uh, AB to the fourth uh, times 2 times 3 squared, 2 times 9 is 18, so I break that down, A squared, B squared. Okay, and then I multiply the common terms together. Uh, and notice how you get negative 2 cubed. Be careful here, this is saying the opposite of 2, so these two numbers can be multiplied, so you can combine their powers. That's why I get the 3 here. Um, you get 3 and times 3 squared gives me 3 cubed. Uh, you get a times a squared, which is a cubed, and b to the 4 times b squared is b to the 6. And notice all those numbers, those powers, 
under the radicand are all matching the index of 3. We know 6 over here can be written. 3 is a factor of 6, so we can simplify that. And we get 15 times negative 2 times 3 times a times b squared. Really, everything comes out because we can write them either as a the radicand's power matches the index, or we can, we can get this um, b to the 6 um, as b squared to the third power. And so everything comes out and you're left with nine, negative 90 AB squared. Uh, question may be, well, you have a negative under this index, but it's a cube root, so having a negative under a, a odd power like that is okay. All right, last example, and this is just combining your last two examples. Uh, you have simplified root 98 minus 2 root 32. So we've got two roots, uh, square roots, so we can, looks like we can do some work here. So I break down 98 into 2 times 7 squared, right? Try to get the numbers underneath to match the index. Uh, minus 2 times uh, the square root of 4 squared times 2. Okay, so the 7 comes out, you get 7 root 2 minus 2 times uh, 4 root 2, which is 7 root 2 minus 8 roots, uh, root 2. So these are like terms because they, they have the same number under the radical, the radicand, same radicand, same index. So it's basically like saying 7x minus 8x, which is negative x, and our x in this case would be root 2, so you get negative root 2. So again, this goes back to the essential understanding. Break down these numbers to match your index of power. It's like really prime factorization. Lastly, we're going to square out this binomial. We're going to multiply this by, not square it out. We're going to multiply this binomial out. Uh, 4 root 3 plus 5 root 2, that quantity times 3 root, the quantity 3 root 2 minus 6. So I use the box method here, and I combine the areas. So four times three, uh, four, uh, 3 times 4 is 12. Root 2 times root 3 is root 6. Negative 6 times 4 is negative 24. Root 3. 5 times 3 is 15. Root 2 times root 2 is root 4. So that equals 30. And 5 times negative 6 is negative 30 root 2. I write all my areas down and see if I can combine anything. There are no like terms. No numbers have the same index or eradicand, so I can't combine them. And so I'm really done here. The answer would be 12 root 6 minus 24 root 3 minus 30 root 2 plus 30. So that's talking about radical uh, expressions and simplifying them, using the quotient rule, ras rationalizing, things that you've seen in Algebra 1. Just make sure the two things here is Anytime you have an index, try to write the radicand to match that index if possible so you can simplify. Okay? Uh, and the other idea is you're simplified completely when your power in the radicand is less than the index. And again, for example, the index here is 2, the power on 2 here is 1. I can't simplify anymore. Okay, if you have any questions or comments, type them below, uh, or you can email me at nicholas.bennett at dc.gov. Thanks, guys.